मोस्ट वेलकम प्रोफेसर आदित्य त्रिपाठी जी नमस्कार हेलो सर हाउ आर यू सर फाइन सर फाइन आई थिंक एवरीथिंग इज गोइंग गोइंग ऑन वेल एट बीएचयू या या थिंग्स आर फाइन आवर प्लेस ओनली थिंग इट इज क्वाइट हॉट हियर दैट्स इट हां ओया द या स्टिल समर या या इट्स at your place i think it would be very pleasant it is very pleasant actually it is raining now and then oh <laughs> almost every day it is raining <laughs> so northeast uh, meghalaya and mizoram like, like that. that yeah 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 actually this is not summer for us the maximum temperature a uh, few days uh, may go up to 30 degrees okay that is not every day a few days, few um, days. but normal normally it is uh, uh, around 25 20 to 25 not more that than is that. very pleasant that is very uh, that is why <laughs> present hearty means it will rain immediately uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. what time we are supposed it, it to is start? not very cold it is not very cold ha ah. mm-hmm. uh, so yeah we are going to start at uh, now this is time sir uh, 130 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss Mana, you are, yeah, you are there, no? So um, I, I will just welcome welcome the resource person. Then you give uh, uh, him, you just uh, give his uh, brief, uh, introduce him uh, with a uh, uh, brief CV. Okay. Hmm? I think there. So, sir, this is uh, um, we we are around forty participants belonging to commerce, management, and economics. Okay. No, so this is a refresher course. Uh, Uh, meant for the faculty members of these three disciplines, and uh, the session will be um, uh, up to three o'clock. Uh, up to three o'clock. Okay. Mm, but as per our uh, uh, HRDC norms, uh, uh, participants will not have access uh, either uh, um, through video or audio, but they will post their questions in chat box and uh, um, Q and A session. So last fifteen um, fifteen uh, uh, minutes you may spare for uh, um, taking. Uh, responding yeah, okay. to those questions okay, okay sir so i i can take directly their questions from the qa ah uh, yes yes no problem yeah no problem at all um in, yeah um so uh, i welcome professor aditya um, aditya tripathi ji um he is head of the department of uh, library and information science um from bhu uh, banaras hindu university and uh, in, in other words he is a technocrat he is an information scientist and uh, he specializes in digital technologies and nowadays we all know uh, the importance of digital technologies uh, uh, in our uh, um, uh, disciplines so from that view um, we 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 feel that uh, we need some expert who is very good in information uh, sciences so that uh, we will understand uh, how to integrate with uh, uh, how to integrate uh, this digital technologies and information sciences into our disciplines with that uh, objective we have invited him and thank you very much sir for accepting our invitation and um, uh, for sparing your valuable time and formal introduction will be given by my colleague dr uh, lalit luangi fanai she is also participant here uh, but sometimes she is also coordinating on behalf of our department yes sir, dr fanai Yes, thank you, sir. Mm, so I may put off my video if you don't mind because uh, it will be stronger. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, all uh, the professors and head department of commerce and all dear participants here this afternoon. We are very fortunate to have our uh, uh, the professor Aditya uh, Tripathi in our midst, and uh, he is uh, current head and. a uh, professor a professor in the department of library and information science in uh, banaras hindu university varanasi uh, varanasi and he is also a former board member uh, in uh, the bhu and uh, he has been involved in more than uh, 22 years of teaching ex- uh, he has a uh, 20 more than 22 years of teaching experience in it applications web technologies digital libraries and uh, uh, dissertation at department of library and information science in bhu and he has produced 
um, uh, uh, lots of uh, like uh, PhD scholar under his guidance, and uh, he supervised uh, uh, like seven um, about seven doctoral dissertation right now, and he has published more than uh, fifty research publication in national and international journals, and uh, he has also uh, written uh, five books and ed uh, four edited volumes and. Mm, he also developed, he is one of the very important person for developing uh, digital library at this bed on DSV page and uh, so many other uh, like in, important works in uh, that university. And he has a lot of contribution uh, for the development of uh, their department as well as the university. Uh, he is uh, also the member uh, of the board of studies and he is also expert member for curriculum design of several universities and uh, he is also an uh, alumnus of uh, BHU at the uh, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, uh, and, and Indian, uh, he is also alumnus of that Indian Statistical Institute, Bangalore and University of Pune. And uh, he has uh, uh, so many specialization uh, like uh, around uh, 10, 10, 10, 10 papers and 10 subjects. So I, uh, so he is very expert in all these kind of subjects. And so we are very proud of him and we are very happy to have him here. And he has also received uh, national awards like uh, I, A, IAS, LIC, Best Young uh, Library Information Science, Science Teacher Award. And uh, he also, uh, receive like some best research paper in uh, in that um, uh, Indian uh, from Indian uh, Association of Special Libraries and Information Centers and uh, Saris also visited Germany and uh, even uh, other countries also in order to develop that digital library project of uh, like their university and so many other thing and he has also written IGNU course for that New Delhi and Hyderabad Central University and he has a lot of uh, like um, involvement for the development of university not only for their own university he has a lot of contribution for uh, the whole country so uh, we are very fortunate to have him here and sir uh, we expect uh, we have a lot of expectation and we are really eager to listen your lectures for this afternoon so i do hope that all the participants will enjoy your lectures and um, so thank you so much for uh, giving your valuable time for this afternoon. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Panay, for your uh, generous introduction. Uh, my uh, PowerPoint is visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, at the outset, I thank the authorities of Mizoram University, especially Professor Jyoti Kumar, Bar Pemruji, who gave me the opportunity <coughs> to talk to this August gathering and share my experiences or what I understand about the subject, within the subject with you and share my knowledge with you. Uh, I have been asked to talk about communication especially about communication process. Uh, you know, we all uh, are involved in communication and communication process uh, from the very birth of ours. Okay? The day we are born, the communication starts. The day uh, we die, okay, or we are no more, uh, even then there are signals which tells people that yes, this person is no more, okay? And uh, being dead also we communicate. Okay. So communication is there, communication is part of this nature. Without communication, nothing happens. The nature also communicates. We also communicate being the part of nature. Okay. So moving ahead, uh, Yeah, uh, first of all, we need to understand what we communicate, okay? We communicate information. 
information in general we all know okay anything which is any data which is contextual is information any fact which has a context attached which makes us which, which makes sense to you is or uh, you can say it is information so first of all this information has to generate unless the information is generated it cannot be communicated okay. so there are different methods through which we generate information sometimes we observe when we observe the information is communicated from some source to us the information which is communicated with that communication we learn okay so observation is one method of information generation we observe then we communicate okay so this is one of the method when we observe we think about on a topic based on our observations and that also becomes a part of information that also you can say it is an information based on my thinking i give a lecture there will be a deliberation that is also kind of information what we imagine that is also an information sometimes we imagine the options Uh, for a problem, and then we work upon the option. Okay, so that imagination on which I am working upon, that also is a kind of information. Of course, when you work upon, you experiment. Sometimes you experiment. Sometimes you do a procedure. And when you do a procedure, when you experiment. that is also an information out of procedure some data comes out okay whatever data comes out if you process that data put that data within a context within a context that also becomes an information any event which is happening like you are in this class this is an event and we are generating lot of information here over a period of time a student who is a noise learner he transform into an expert there is an evolu- evolution of a student this evolution itself is an information how he evolved over a period of time what were the stages how what happened in each stage what changes were there what changes are observed what is the difference between the initiation or the first step and the last step okay or the final destination this is evolution and during evolution we generate lot of information and of course we all dream okay when you sleep you dream many they dream about something they dream about their goal okay and when you dream when you imagine it is a part of information there are different ways we express information the easiest method is verbally we speak i'm talking to you okay. any oral communication verbal communication of transferring my ideas to you is oral communication 
it is verbal communication i am using my vocal cord i am using some specific signals voice modulations you call it as a language okay. and then this language is communicated to you you are listening this and then you also understand this language and then you are getting what actually i am trying to communicate my idea so any sign language like you know a skull with the cross uh, bones normally we use it for danger okay green light on signal so that you can move ahead red light on a signal that means you should stop these are signs these are symbols sometimes we use signs we use symbols sometimes you know we make certain gesture in order to let others know what exactly i am trying to communicate this gesture is sometimes to eyes to your body postures to the movement of your hands okay but you make a specific remark you make a specific sign and then you try to communicate of course the oral communication or the sign communication is real time once the event happened it happened the event is passed by you cannot record so you need a mechanism of recording the information one method is handwriting you scribble on a piece of paper you scribble on a wall you scribble on a stone sometimes we have seen in the garden scribbling on some tree some specific mark of our expression these are you know method of communication recording the information so that the information can be remembered information can be reviewed in future okay so we have handwritten mechanism a specific form of recording information the earliest civilization they used there was no script okay so for your handwriting we use script for hindi you use devanagari for english we use roman alphabet okay for tamil you use grantha this specific script so there are different scripts to record your expression and we use these scripts on a surface we scribble on the surface and then we record but the earliest civilization there was no language there was no script probably they used to have some language we do not know but definitely script came quite late and they wanted to record so we have lot of you know rock paintings or rock scribblings 
thousands of years old. Stating how the human civilization was, how it evolved, what was the environment people used to live in. Of course, things continued. Now we have colors in pictorial form. We have different kinds of colors to express our feelings. A lot of, you know, changes are there, a lot of, you know, method of sharpening of expression was there, using colors, using contours in pictures. And then we have pictorial forms and a lot of transformation we can see. The wonderful paintings of Anjanta and Alora, they communicate. They communicate Jataka tales to you. So these are pictorial representations. Of course, over a period of time, now we automated the process of scribbling. We came up with a printed mecha printing mechanism. So now we have printed form. The idea was to make multiple copies of a single document. In good old days, there were writers. So the author, once he writes a book, there were other writers or copiers, they used to copy the same writing. And they used to create multiple copies, that was their job. But after the printing came, okay, we could generate multiple copies. So printing or printed text or printed diagram, printed email also contains information. Of course, now the period is out. Uh, Change now we are using electronic or digital media. The beauty of it is, you know, you can record not only text, you can record not only graphics, you can record the moving objects. Okay. You can record video, you can record audios. And not only you can record, you can create multiple copies of it within no time. These are searchable. Okay. And searching is so fast that we cannot imagine. You have searched in Google. You have experience of digital search. We have wonderful indexing and searching techniques today. We have wonderful tools to search across the digital media. Of course, sometimes the very size of the content is more and we want to condense it. So you have abbreviations you have packaging, you call it as zipping of information. Okay. So there are condensed form of information. If you have multiple files to send across network, normally what we do is we zip the files in a single file and then we send it over network. We use some program like WinRAR or WinZip or those who are using Linux, they can tar. They can use tar and then they can create a single file and send across. If you have a very long name, you can create an abbreviation. So even abbreviations contain information. Like PTI, Press Trust of India. MZU, we understand it is Mizoram University. BHU, Banaras Hindu University. So abbreviations are condensations. Abbreviations are condensations. 
and condensation can be done even with the digital media sometimes we code what we send over network because we are scared we are afraid that others may read my information sometimes i use confidential uh means i have confidential text to transfer so we codify our information and then we transfer but again it is information of course uh, sometimes with the moment you codify that means you are translating translation is across language translation is across you know codification and decodification that is also kind of translation so these are different forms of information we talk about but at the end of it whatever information is there it has to be communicated and how we communicate we all know you don't have to teach we don't have to be taught how to communicate a newborn the moment the newborn is hungry it is hungry cry okay nobody teaches a newborn baby how to communicate so communication as i told you it is part of nature it is an exchange of information between and among individuals sometimes it is between sometimes it is among a group what we use is some kind of symbol some kind of sign the kid the moment it cries it's a sign if the health is not good there is a fever it is a sign the very behavior of the kid is a sign sometimes it is it cannot speak our language but there are signs and signals from his very appearance from his body and all that which communicate so that is why this kid is there with a stomach ache sitting and crying in front of you as i told you communication is could be one to one the son is talking to his father or it could be within a group people are talking with each other in a group but communication is happening around and it is real time today the methods of communication has changed because we are in a completely different arena of human civilization we are using internet we are using web tools the technologies for communicating for recording and for listening or uh, assimilating but yes communication is happening sometimes it is a real time sometimes you can have a time lag or uh, if the event has happened you can view the event afterwards you can view the recording of the event but communication happens there are different parts and parties in the communication process the one who initiates the signal okay the one who gets an idea is on the the very first layer or very first stage or very first one in the whole communication process we call him a part of the object of sender but see the sender gets an idea in his mind but how he communicate 
the idea has to come out unless it comes out it cannot be communicated okay if you are traveling or if you are transporting a food from one house to other house you have to pack it you have to have a container if you are traveling you cannot you have to have a container to which you can travel okay you need a medium you need a container and you need a mechanism where you can record your idea so this is a kind of an encoding i get the idea then i am i have my mind has encoded the idea into a language i am using here english as encoding language the person from mizoram will be using the local mijo language the person in the tamil nadu in tamil nadu he will be using tamil the person who is in andhra he will be using telugu so these are the you know encoding systems the language is nothing but it is an encoding system so you encode when you encode then it becomes a message like you use whatsapp so what you do is you scribble on your smartphone or you type on your smartphone what you do is you are using a language and a script to encode your idea okay you know here two things are involved language and script both and together it becomes a message and not only that you are using language and script and then the machine your mobile phone is translating that into a binary digit some kind of signal so you see language script and then some signal you see the complexity of the encoding process and then one whole chunk of this becomes a message the message or the container is transferred to the receiver the receiver takes it and then the same reverse process happens of decoding and when it decodes the receiver decodes he gets the he gets an idea of what exactly sender wants to come now again you would say that there is a problem i i attempted saying something but after decoding the guy understood something else now this is basically happens because of reasoning because of the knowledge or the context the sender is sending and the receiver is receiving they both are in two different contexts that they will derive probably different meaning if i say today it is hot the person who would be sitting in mizoram would be saying that okay probably it is 30 degree 25 to 30 degree that means it is hot the person in ladakh le ladakh the moment you say it is hot he may think okay probably it is 10 to 15 degree temperature but the moment i say it is hot in up i assume that the temperature is about 40 now see three different persons in three different contexts we derive different meaning this happens that is the kind of subjectivity we have and this is because of our existing knowledge base our environment and so on and so forth. and of course the last but not the least you give the feedback okay that means the person sitting here in 
uh, would say, oh, that means it is hot means around 40 degree temperature is there. The person in Ladakh is just saying, oh, is it hot means 10 to 10 degree temperature? Now they are giving the feedback to the center, the sender. Okay, what exactly hot means for them? Okay, for a clarification, this is feedback. So again, you know, it is a cyclic process. Now these guys, decoders became sender, and sender became decoder. And this is the way things happen. You know, communication is an eternal process, I always say. It is happening. It is a natural process. It is around. It is within. It is between. It is among. It is for all. When it is within, we call it as intrapersonal communication. Sometimes I sit myself and think what is happening around what I'm supposed to do next. What would be my routine for the day? So the idea, the expressions, whatever I'm getting or what I'm reasoning in my mind, this all is internal communication. Sometimes I try to pick up the best option for a solution. No, probably A is right. No, probably B is right. Probably C is right. It's like, you know, multiple choice question. What happens, communication happens within. So we have intrapersonal. When me and my friend, we talk together one to one. It is interpersonal. Or maybe two, three friends we sit together. It is interpersonal. We share our feelings, we share our thoughts, we communicate. And in this process, sometimes I am sender, sometimes my friend is sender. So this process is interchangeable. The best part is I can clarify, I can seek explanations, I can get feedback. So, you know, when we communicate one to one or with a small group, it is all interpersonal communication. Sometimes it is contextual. We talk in a specific, you know, environment. We talk with a specific scope. Like today I'm talking to you. My scope of talk is communication process. So whatever you would be asking or you would be talking back to me, within the context we both will be talking. If all of a sudden one of you or I start talking about Andromeda Galaxy, how the life is there in Andromeda Galaxy, it is an out of box, out of context. It will not make any sense, any meaning to any one of us in this group. Because we all are sitting here together within a limited scope of talk or communication. Our context is fixed. And there is another communication, like supervisor and student. 
husband and wife friend to friend a friend of a friend now there we have communication we call that communication as developmental communication because we come up with something new we may talk about various things sometimes we may talk within a context a developmental communication with the context may also happen then we have group communication when a large number of people they sit in a meeting they discuss there are deliberations many times i have feel, felt in these meetings some guys are more outspoken they communicate more verbally some guys are less spoken but what they want they also communicate verbally with their gesture with their appearance with their action so communication is there within the group also there are some guys who are dormant they don't want they don't communicate they don't sometimes they don't participate it doesn't mean they are not communicating they are communicating that whatever we are talking about they are not interested in so communication is there to the group it's a communication mass communication we all know we are in the arena of mass communication we have to use video newspaper i don't know what it is but we have a lot of channels of mass communication today the audience is mass is bulk the problem with this mass communication is feedback is very difficult but yes this kind of communication is used for motivating people aligning people to a certain idea community communicating the decisions to the people to a large number of population so one side to other side so from one source to multiple receivers it is very fast but from multiple receivers back to source is very difficult so there are a lot of models of communication the one the oldest i believe is classical model basically it's not a model he has asked some question in a sentence who says what in which channel to whom with what it I will review this statement. Who? Who is your source? Who is actually perceiving the idea? The person who is responsible for generation of idea. Who is who? The sender. Who is what? he coding uh, sorry encoding now packets of messages are created okay. or the language the so verbal spoken speaking in which channel medium through which the message has traveled now when i am speaking to you the channel is the network internet through which i am communicating to you when we are talking face to face 
the air is the channel my you know voice signals are traveling through air so air is channel to whom characteristics of receiver and audience okay now the my message is traveling it is reaching to the receiver then he will be forth it will reach to the receiver the receiver is an is actually the ultimate audience with what effect what meaning he derives out of it so now the moment meaning derivation comes into picture the subjectivity of message transfer happens you would see subjectivity in message transfer because whatever message the sender has sent same meaning the receiver should also receive or understand the very famous model shannon weaver model we are reading it and studying it from a very childhood There nothing great about it very simple one you have information source actually it is your sender then you have a transmitter the encoder so the message is actually encoded and transmitted to a transmitter and it is some form of some signals so my voice is actually signal and you require a channel in this okay now the moment you go in channel it is not a dedicated channel there will be lot noise so far we could not derive a perfect conductor of energy okay there will be always loss of energy and the moment you create a signal actually these signals are nothing but energy packets there will be loss okay there will be a loss there will be a you know deterioration not only that there will be other signals there may be interference of signal So the loss, the interference, we all are noise. When I am speaking to you, though this room is closed, but still the fan is there. So noise of fan you can you can hear. So then, whatever signal I have sent, it has some data loss. it has some new attachments of signals and this is what is received by the decoder or the receiver now from here the receiver has to pull out the original signal leaving the other noise apart and then it reaches to the sender and sender derives the meaning so this is fairly simple model but there are three important concepts which we need to look into one is entropy there is always uncertainty uncertainty of getting the noise pale not deriving the exact meaning from the signal so a level of uncertainty is there always there this is law of nature nothing is perfect in this world so the moment you communicate that also cannot be perfect you cannot measure exactly 1 kg potato no one can measure in this world it will be slightly less or slightly more it cannot be exactly one thing nothing is perfect so 
of your communication also cannot be perfect. So that means whatever I am trying to tell you, okay, that also may not be perfect. Redundancy: the degree to which information is not unique in the system. There may be multiple copies. You can have multiple copies. You want to communicate. You are always scared of data loss. So what exactly the system does? It keeps a copy and then transfers the. It keeps the original and transfers the copy. and when copy is received by the receiver the receiver gives the feedback yes boss i understood what you meant then this sender deletes the copy so you see there is a redundancy even when i am teaching my student an idea in a class when i speak a sentence i look his face whether he could understand if he doesn't until then my idea in my mind is still there my words are still there in my mouth if he wants i can repeat the moment he says okay boss understood then i move to the next idea and this is what happens in any machine system any machine system the transfer happens like this of course noise i have discussed in detail and then comes the channel capacity how much data can the channel which is carrying the information may be here in other words bandwidth okay bandwidth that's it or the size of the tube through which the water is flowing that is you know the capacity of channel then ask good shram model uh if this is also based on you know shannon weaver only only thing the method see there is not much difference in these models only thing is the way they represent it, the model you will see two large ellipses dotted ellipses field of experiences that means the scope of two people one is sender other is receiver okay and then there is a kind of overlap that means the field of common experience you and me we both are talking together because you are also interested to listen uh about the process of communication i am also here to express my views on process of communication and we have common field of experience okay now whatever i am speaking it is reaching to you in the form of message after encoding you are decoding it then after decoding you are trying to interpret you are trying to analyze whether i am right or whether i am wrong based on your ideas okay and then you become encoder and then you may be giving me a message yes boss i understood no boss you are wrong uh, i think this should be right and i have this question or this query and then this becomes a cyclic process if you see okay so encoder sends a message decoder takes the message then decoder interprets then again it encodes sends the message to the source and this time decoder becomes the source and the encoder becomes the receiver so this goes vice versa it's a cyclic process it keeps on happening so you know this whole process uh if you see the channel were uh or the previous one which i talked about they were you know kind of a linear model 
Whereas this model is a kind of you know cyclic model. It is not linear. It says that it goes on happening, 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 and that is why it says that it is truly really sweet. Sometimes sender becomes receiver, sometimes receiver becomes sender, and so on. Now, there are always difficulties in communicating. Uh, we have very commonly, uh, we see in our news channels, if somebody is alleged for something, uh, telling uh, whatever, if he says something nonsense and then he is caught, on camera and then people start condemning him then he says no no actually what happens is they have uh, misinterpreted okay now what he is trying to blame is the very meaning what i wanted to communicate that has been misinterpreted so whatever i was trying to tell it actually did not reach so there is some kind of a barrier there is some kind of a problem if in between reporter is there, they blame the reporter. No, no, he has manipulated the fact. He has manipulated the fact or he has pretend, presented the facts such that uh, my what I wanted to communicate could not be communicated. So these are basically barriers of communication. So very simplest, the simplest barrier is geographical barrier. So if you are sitting in your room, I am sitting in my room, we cannot. Okay. We cannot communicate. So for communication, we have to come together. We have to connect. And, you know, geographical distance is the biggest barrier. I cannot shout such a loud that my voice can reach to Mizora. This is a geographical barrier. But yes, I can shout such that my voice can go to next building. But again, I have to shout. So I am using more energy. So geographical barrier is a very important barrier. But today, if you say, I don't consider it really a barrier because we have now the tools, we have technique. I can talk to a person right in the United States. You are seeing me real time. I'm sitting in other part of the country. You are sitting in other part of the country. You are watching me real time. So now the technology has actually diminished this barrier actually diminish this time. But of course, the technology cannot diminish this barrier 100%. Okay, 95% to 90%, I say that, yes, of course, it has diminished. It has changed the situation. Now people can communicate. But if you want to see, you can view an object over network, like my mobile phone. If you, I can show you here on mobile. But if you want to know how it feels like, that you cannot get from the technology unless you touch it physically. And for that, you have to come to this place or this mobile has to reach to you in your hand. So, you know, of course it has removed physical barrier, but still, you know, it cannot be 100%. So that we have to keep in our mind whenever we are using technology. Of course, another important, very important barrier 
psychological barrier. This is a very important barrier, I think. Psyche of a person is very important for any people. Like I tell you, my own example, I am born and brought up in Varanasi, in a house or in a locality which is a South Indian locality. In Banaras, there are a lot of South Indian localities. And there is a South Indian locality. In a house which I am born and brought up, it is owned by a Tamil family. The famous poet Subramanyam Bharti used to live there. Then I moved to Bangalore, southern India, traveled widely Karnataka, uh, you know, Andhra, Tamil Nadu, sometimes Kerala. I have a lot of friends, Tamil friends. But I tell you, I could never pick up Tamil. Because I had a psychological barrier. I cannot learn Tamil. But whereas English is not my mother language, but I picked over a period of time. Okay. So this is attitude problem. I have problem with my attitude. And if I make my mind, no, I cannot learn, I cannot learn. You cannot teach me. I don't have interest. Why I learned English? There was motivation. I was not good in English. I, I studied in some Hindi medium school. I was not good with English. But the moment I moved to South India and an institute like ISI, I found even cooks and tunes are speaking English. Then I thought, oh, I, without English, I cannot make my day. I cannot run my day-to-day -day activity. And then there was a motivation. I learned English. I could not pick up Tamil because of my attitude. I had always anxiety that I will speak something wrong. Maybe some prejudice. I won't learn. But from my childhood, I am listening Tamil. That is for sure. Than any other language. In fact, I can make more uh, in Kannada compared to Tamil. I can speak a little bit of Bengali. I can speak a little bit of Kannada. But very difficult in speaking in Telugu or you know, Tamil. This is psychological problem that I cannot do. Then socio-cultural barrier. There are cultural religions. There are many things. We say these are taboo. We should not talk in public. There are many things we hide or we restrict. Okay, only this discussion has to happen among teachers, not with non-teaching staff. Okay, or this uh, discussion has to happen only among students. Should not be with a teacher, it should not be to teachers. Now you see these are socio-cultural barriers. Communication is happening, but it is restricted. Some kind of barrier I have put forth. This is there within our society also. And it's very common, very common, very common. It creates a kind of, you know, many times I say that, I feel that. It has created a, you know, big motor, big gap within the society.
a class of people will be talking or communicating within their class not with the other class and if there will not be the sharing of ideas there will not be any development okay. so that's very important then linguistic barrier sometimes when i speak english i commit lot of grammatical mistakes i'm not perfect even if i write hindi i may write grammatically wrong if you try to translate my idea to your friend in minjo probably the translation is not perfect so my exact idea doesn't go i'm using too many words for which you don't have words in minjo or i'm using so many flowery words in my language i am trying to communicate a very single simple idea with lot of flowery words it creates lot of confusion i don't have proper vocabulary i don't have proper words many times it happens people say i was at loss of words what to say you see this say means this shows that sometimes we have we, we, we got meet with linguistic barrier in our last time of course technology is a big barrier technology changes my mother still cannot use smartphone so she still uses with that keypad phone but she uses technology it's not that she is not using technology she is using technology but the technology has changed and now it is a barrier for her she will learn over a period of time of course power is very important electricity is very important whatever we are doing in this network environment okay uh, using internet or ict tools these all are you know uh using electrical appliances so any kind of power failure would play a havoc okay now that we are talking about cryptocurrency or we are talking about you know cashless society concept is very good no doubt very good you don't have to carry anything but the soul is power dependent think about you all are economists or management people i don't know but a day comes when there will be a power loss what would happen how i am going to do my business how i would buy a bottle of water for my kid i don't know i don't have any answer of course from our very childhood we are taught more study more confusion no study no confusion more study more information more confusion no study no information no confusion so too much overloading of information is also trouble you do not know which is right which is wrong how to evaluate in fact we the guys who are in information industry we are in a big trouble today how to evaluate the right piece, right piece of information there is you know i don't know whether to say it is explosion of information or i say it is bang of information big bang thing. and in that bang i have to pick up the right what i have to catch the right piece you know i'm not using the word pick i have to catch because if i can't catch it will pass by i have to catch the right piece of information and then give to my user 
that's a biggest you know dilemma for us today in our industry the too much of information overload has itself become a barrier of course we are using a lot of tools like management information systems like you know a lot of automated systems are there to do our business for our uh, recording our transactions uh, you people are uh, i think much better prepared than me uh, in understanding and managing these systems uh, i am only uh, more known to these systems from the designing part of it how the systems work but functionality i think you are much better than us much better than me so you know you can use these systems to record your transactions to keep a control to systematize to standardize your procedures to make relevant experience among uh, decisions so you can have many databases together which you would be using to a kind of an interface for generating the activities for generating the reports and of course these data sets would be coming from different sources and they are being recorded in one data warehouse or sometimes different data warehouses would be also consulted by your system mis system to generate a specific service or to generate a specific output we have decision support system where we have incorporated a uh, knowledge management system kms keeping the very idea of actually recording the overall knowledge of an organization when i say the overall knowledge it means the knowledge which is available in physical form the knowledge which is not in physical form that means in a human mind or human brain okay uh, technically we call it as explicit and tacit knowledge okay. so we record this all together and to an interface in order to make decisions we use the system so we require a km as knowledge management system to handle this kind of you know system uh, the scenario so of course you will be using a lot of database management system you will be using a lot of modeling techniques okay because ultimately what you are doing is the modeling of the data okay. so the moment you get a problem you look into your database and then you uh, see the data and then you select the best model and then you match with the data and accordingly then we come out with the result so you can have a decision support system of course a little beyond if you go we have expert systems uh, these systems have inbuilt reasoning capability they use some kind of idea of artificial intelligence so the very inherent part of these systems are you know Uh, inference engine some kind of reasoners but ultimately these all three systems whether it's your management information system or dss or whether your knowledge management system they all work on dbm database management only thing is the method or the way uh, the functionality keeps on changing uh, uh, through these systems uh in these export systems are sometimes you know uh, we use them for robotics we use them for uh, you know 
natural language processing. So there are a lot of applications of the expert system. Uh, in fact, nowadays we are uh, using these expert systems even in your data analysis, uh, like big data analysis and all that. So a lot of applications are coming with these kind of systems. In fact, when we were the students, we used to read about expert system. We, uh, we did some kind of you know NLP systems in our uh, student days. But today, if you see, NLP has gone a very long way. Okay. Now, today, the kind of interfaces you are getting, okay, like in mobile phone or uh, in your public chaos, uh, like ATM machines or hello machines and all that, the kind of uh, you know intelligent agents you are getting over internet who can give you the best suggestions okay? without your knowledge they frisk your data and then uh, throw a lot of advertisements on you so which sometimes you don't want and you get irritated you know this whole data mining business you know, you know big industry that has come up. But ultimately at the base of it, whatever you see, we all are trying to communicate some way or other. Only thing is you should have patience to listen, to learn. I think with this remark, I will uh, close my uh, uh, lecture and if there is any question, I would love to take. Uh, Professor Jyoti Kumar, can I take hey, yes, the questions? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, um, though it is uh, basic and fundamental, we need yeah. uh, this type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, basic knowledge about uh, um, communication, how it works, and the communication systems um, in the organization. Uh, that is very much uh, relevant. and. Uh, um, your way of communication is also quite interesting. You know, it is a, it is slow and steady. <laughs> so, so with some pause be, um, between the words. Uh, so, uh, we, I really um, uh, appreciate uh, you know your, the way you presented the very simple things, uh, um, um, but in a in a very uh, uh, crystal clear manner. And you cover yeah, it's just like an overview of communication, organizational communication. Wonderful. Um, uh, Questions. Uh, one question is there. Is, um, this is from Dr. Uh, Kweli Mukhopadhyay. Sir, any light on how to overcome communication barriers in the workplace? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this is a very. Uh, you know, we all come across with this problem day to day. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, See, communication, you have to establish a communication some way or other way, uh, whether it is, uh, you know, sometimes a small gesture of a smile also communicates, okay, to your unknown guy. So, uh, yes, of course, in our workplace, many times it happens that we all are engrossed in our work and we, uh, the very next colleague in the next room, uh, we find it very yes. difficult. We don't find time to talk to him or her and all that. This happens. Uh, but again, you have to create the opportunities where uh, you all sit together. Especially, I, I, I encourage uh, my colleagues also here that we at least have a cup of tea or sit on a platform to discuss. Okay. Uh, and in fact, this is a very idea of knowledge management system. When we talk about knowledge management, they say that uh, there should be opportunities, there should be platforms where people should sit together and they talk. Uh, unless you sit together, you talk, you cannot communicate what is there in your mind. Okay, So, uh, you know, yeah. the opportunities has to be created or, you know, if you want to overcome this problem. Uh, if you are boss, then you are the responsible person to create the opportunity. If you are subordinate, then you have to look for the opportunity. 
Uh, one more question uh, yeah. from uh, Amuthan. Uh, which methods of communication uh, is more suitable uh, to make uh, students uh, interesting in oh, class? Oh, yes. This, yeah, this is a very interesting question. Uh, uh, because many times it so happens when I am teaching in class, my students sleep. In fact, I also used to sleep when I was in sitting in class but but the, now now the issue is um, in online system we don't know who is sleeping and who, who oh is yes, oh yes. that is true <laughs> so, that is why i i hate this online system <laughs> <laughs> in fact in the classroom i uh, what i i adopt my strategy of uh, communication is of uh, taking the classes uh, see First thing is voice modulation. Mm. You should not have a monotonous voice in your class. Mm. Sometimes you should have high pitch where you want to give more emphasis, uh, emphasis or sometimes you can have low pitch. That is one thing. Because this voice modulation makes a lot of difference. Second important thing is eye contact. Mm. Eye contact with the student. It's not that you can have an eye contact with one student only. You can shift your eye contact with different students when you are talking. That also creates a kind of attention among the student. Apart from this, I move a lot in the class. Mm -hmm. I don't stand on one place and speak. Yes, of sir. course, I use Blackboard uh, very rigorously. Apart from that, I move a lot. Online, it is not possible. <laughs> Online, it is not possible. <laughs> Online, it is not possible. Uh, and, and, and it is it is affecting our health also, in fact. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Online is not healthy. In fact, online method, I really do not know whether the participants are following. Mm -hmm. Okay, It is just one side rhetoric kind of thing. Uh, for my students also, I feel that is uh, a big difference. In fact, my own students shared me that when they entered in this uh, my course, they were in online mode. Mm -hmm. In between, when it became offline, then they came to class and my first lecture, after two, three lectures, they said, sir, we now we realize what we were missing in online mode. Mm -hmm. So there is a big difference. Yes. There is a big difference in online and offline mode. So when you are communicating in class, uh, you have to adopt many strategies. It's not that only one strategy you can adopt mm -hmm. while teaching to student or communicating to student. Sometimes you can have question answer. Sometimes when I see my students are sleeping, I crack a joke. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then also they come, they become attentive that something happened. The guy who is sleeping, I go and stand next to him. I don't touch him. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the moment he sees moving, he becomes attentive. So mm -hmm. you have to adopt a lot of strategies. Uh, it comes over a period of time. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Now, one question from my side. Um, um, you rightly pointed out the, both the things. Technology is helping us actually to communicate uh, faster with a large number of uh, audiences. I mean, that is, a, that is a positive side. But at the same time, especially in social media, there is no control who is communicating what about the content quality and credibility of the content. Sometimes it is creating a social unrest also. I mean, uh, unnecessary problems and uh, off-truths are full lies like that. And unfortunately, some organizations nowadays, they are using uh, social media just to um, have some bad propaganda to target uh, their opponents or... Uh, uh, rival organizations like that and um, um, it, it is uh, doing i mean uh, like um, um, disinformation or misinformation misinformation yes. they are you know they are doing a lot of disservice to the society so actually um, how to control this is a challenge for the governments also so how to control such type of misinformation it's a very big challenge that is what i was trying to point out uh, during my talk uh, mm. In fact, we all belong to uh, this library science profession and information industry. And our idea, basic idea is to give authentic information to the people. Mm. In fact, that is the biggest challenge because 
so much information is there you do not know which is right which is wrong mm-hmm. okay and they as you rightly pointed out social media we don't have any control and i don't see there is any mechanism of controlling at most what they are doing is banning some users uh, from social media the, the next day that guy will come with another name so you really cannot stop these kind of things only thing is what i say is to create awareness among the users mm. among the people to pick up the right thing mm. otherwise you see uh, in this open environment it's very difficult i find uh, to uh, get the you know uh, right information and you know authentic information Mm-hmm. so whenever you are getting some information you need to look for the source that is very important what is the exact source of information unless source you find the source yes yes, yes. don't trust any information mm-hmm. that is the biggest thing i always say that find mm-hmm. out the source if source is authentic then the information is authentic otherwise it is plain propaganda believe it true, true. a human mentality problem with human mentality is um, you, we, we like a, some sensational type of yes, uh, news yes. you know um, and, and and we not only believe it uh, be, uh, believe the wrong information we try to spread we also we become an instrument to propagate it you know forwarding yeah. messages and all those things yeah, yeah. so uh, so uh, um, that has become a big social nuisance nowadays yes, actually yes it has become a big social nuisance Mm. in fact the moment when earlier social media came we started talking too big about it but nowadays i feel that sometimes we should make i mean uh, create a distance from social media if you really want to have a peaceful mind yes otherwise yes. otherwise sometimes it is very difficult to handle a very useful session sir because basically as teachers so, um, i mean our effectiveness depends uh, heavily on our uh, how effective we are in our communication yeah. communication not necessarily mean uh, kind of skill it also includes uh, how we conduct uh, with our colleagues with our students our way of behavior and you know um, uh, what kind of uh, i mean uh, um, those things certainly you know, you know, influence our personality as a teacher and it has its own um, even silence is also silence as silence communication is silence is also very powerful communication <laughs> so <laughs> so so and uh, we we understand some teachers they are very good in communication doesn't mean uh, speaking so so loudly and uh, um, with bigger voice and you know uh, so many words it is not uh, it is not just about vocabulary it is all about our behavior our personality and our character so um, this is a right topic for a refresh any refresh course such type of topic is very much uh, relevant and i request uh, um, um, my colleague professor bartendu singh to conclude he can take uh, two minutes uh, professor bartendu singh and uh, um, he can conclude formally this session uh, thank you sir uh, it was a nice presentation uh, i could i could uh, attend only last uh, half an hour or something because i had class and i was there in the class so i couldn't gain these things but uh, we are recording the sessions and after that i will be going for that so anyway thanks uh, professor aditya tripathi ji for uh, sparing us time and uh, enlightening us on this uh, useful topic on uh, communication process as professor jyoti kumar was just tell- Professor Jyoti Kumar was just telling that uh, uh, this should be a part of almost all such courses because all teachers. It is not only what we communicate in our classroom; it goes much beyond that. How we communicate with our colleagues, how we communicate with in the society, uh, everything actually is having a great impact on our 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 image. That does matter. So thanks a lot for enlightening all those things, sir. Um, 